1980-81 edition of the Boston Celtics had a strong sense of their own superiority. They were able to bring into hold the most formidable of opposition. They were resolved for the purpose at hand. Take these three ingredients and you have the makeup of the Boston Celtics. Very simply stated, it is called pride, poise, and determination. And it's blocked by Parrish. What a play by Parrish. It goes quickly over to Maxwell on the cup to Archibald. Lays it up and in and he was fouled on the play. Sports cruising through. Underneath the Maxwell. Oh, what a play yeah. by Chris Ford. A great play by Chris Ford. Back to Bird. Give and go. Lays it in. He goes up from the pop. It is no good. The rebound by Bird. He's been incredible. In 1979-80, the Celtics surprised the basketball world by posting a remarkable 61-21 record after a rather disastrous 29-53 campaign the year before. Team owner Harry Mangorian, now in full control of the operation, gave general manager Red Auerbach the necessary backing to rebuild the team. Red, in his genius way, immediately went out and got the coach he wanted, Bill Fitch. In two seasons at the helm of the Celtics, Fitch's record has been a glittering 123 wins against only 41 losses. Auerbach also lured number one draft choice Larry Bird into the fold. In his two seasons with Boston, Bird has already gained the superstar status that was destined to be his. However, the 1980 season ended rather dismally when the Celtics lost to the Philadelphia 76ers in five games in the Eastern Conference Playoff Finals. So it was back to the drawing board to put the finishing touches on what was to become a perfect basketball machine. First, Red acquired the services of center Robert Parrish from the Golden State Warriors, along with Golden State's number one draft choice for the Celtics' two first-round choices. Auerbach then used that acquired draft choice to select 6-foot-11-inch Kevin McHale of Minnesota. These two additions would prove to be vital cogs in the Celtics' rise to their 14th championship. However, as the Celtics prepared for the new season, they did receive one shocking jolt when veteran center Dave Cowens found that the competitive fires that were his trademark were no longer there and announced his retirement. The final link to their last championship was gone. Could the Celtics go on from there? Well... On opening night, October 10th, before a capacity house at the Boston Garden, the Celtics showed that they were ready as they routed the Cleveland Cavaliers 130 to 103. Parrish fakes one way, turns in. Oh, Robert Parrish opens up the scoring for the Boston Celtics in 1980 as they make the first shot they take. Bird has gone low this time. A turnaround on Robich, and it's good. Now Henderson knocks the ball down and steals it. Top of the circle. Flies in. In the air. The shot no good. The rebound by Smith. It's stolen away by Maxwell, and he lays it up and in. And actually, you got to give an assist to Henderson on the play as he snaps the ball out of uh, Randy Smith's hand. In the lane of Parrish. Turnaround is good. And it is 10 to 3. Boston is out front by 7. 9.02 left to go here. The breakaway by Bird. He's going in alone and stuff. Bird wheels, Bird fakes, Mitchell playing him very well, Bird takes him through, changes hands, misses the shot, Maxwell a rebound, 19 to 10. I don't know what was wrong with Kenny Carr, but he did grab it and say, beautiful back to Boston, from Larry Bird to a backdoor cut by Henderson, what a play that was. Bird holds the ball, drops it low to Parrish, fakes inside, goes baseline and hits. 26-12 to score, Boston is out front by 14, up. This was to be the Celtics' only home game for three weeks as they set out on a seven-game road trip. The Celts posted a 4-3 record on that trip, but there was one costly loss. No, it wasn't a game. It was M.L. Carr, who broke his foot in a contest against Washington and would be sidelined for over three months. However, the loss of one player would not deter this team. They meshed too well as a unit, and they showed the home folks what they meant when they returned home to defeat the Kansas City Kings 115-110 as they rallied from a 64-53 halftime deficit. Ah, and on roll it goes through Roby. Roby gets 
hit hard, lays it up, it's no good, but it's tipped in by Kirsten. 90 to 85, Boston is out in front. Back up top now to Ford. Chris fakes, fires up, misses. Oh, no! How about that one? It hit the rim, went way up in the air, and then came right back down through. Maxwell got the release, gets the down court pass from Henderson, and lays it in. 98-88, the score. Boston is out in front by 10 again. Now underneath the bird. Bird catches and shoots and hits. A one-motion thing. He went up with his back to the basket. In midair, he caught the ball. In midair, he twisted the body. In midair, he shot it. Whew. Archibald down low over the bird. Bird a step back pop. He's got it. 104-95, Boston. Out in front by nine. Archibald messing around with the ball on the outside, just fiddling and diddling. Now he daddles. Now he goes to Bird. Bird a quick pop. He's got it. 110 to 100 to score with Maxwell of Paris. The two-hand stuff is good. Boston leads by 10, 112 to 102. He fakes. He's going to throw it up from the three-point zone. The shot is no good. The rebound fought for. Goes out of bounds, and the ball game's over. And so Boston, a real scratched out, hard nose, hard fought, come from behind victory. And I'll tell you, they earned this one. They really earned it. The final score is Boston 115 and Kansas City 110. In early December, the Celtics found themselves in second place in the Eastern Division, trailing the Philadelphia 76ers by five and a half games despite a most impressive 18-8 and eight record. However, the Celtics managed to narrow that margin to two games by the time the new year rang in, winning 12 straight, including seven on the road. The die had now been cast for this season. The Celtics and the 76ers would jostle for the lead the rest of the way. Late in January, the 76ers came to Boston for the first time in the season, leading the Celtics by a mere half game. As is the case whenever these two teams meet, it was a thriller right to the end. Underneath it goes to Maxwell. Jump hook over Irving is good. 197 to score. Boston is out in front by three. Cheeks is in the lane. Back out now to Julius. The shot by Julius is good. Oh, it's 199. On the left now to Tony. Tony Lowe goes into Irving. And it's blocked by Paris. Maxwell has it on the right. What a play by Paris. In the left corner to Henderson. Back out to Ford. Down the corner to Henderson. Down low to Paris. Double team. Fakes. Crossover. Lays it off to Maxwell. Stops the ball. Another great play by Robert Paris. 102 to 99. (laughs) Oh, is he playing up a storm? I'll tell you. In the corner to Irving, look out. Back out, a bad pass. Jones taps it out to Tony, however, and he misses. Jones has the rebound. Jones ducks his head, goes up and hits. And there are 16 seconds left, and Boston has a one-point lead. The pass in goes to Maxwell. Maxwell protecting the ball. they got to hurry. It goes now to Henderson. Henderson looking. And it goes to Parrish. Parrish drops it, and he got fouled. Parrish makes the first shot. He's got to make he's got to make the next shot as well for Boston to rest a little easier. Even then they won't rest easy. The shot is good. And Philadelphia calls their last time out and Boston has a three-point lead. Out of pass goes to Tony. He wants the foul again. He lost the ball. It's a loop. Henderson got it. It's all over. The ball game is over. Boys, look at those big smiles. The Boston Celtics have defeated the Philadelphia 76ers. The crowd explodes. This was a great, great ball game. The final score here in the Boston Garden. Boston 104, Philadelphia 101. On February the 8th, between halves of a Boston-San Diego confrontation, Dave Cowens returned to the Garden floor. It was his day of honor as his number 18 was to be retired. As is the custom, he received numerous gifts and accolades, but as only the big redhead could do, he brought a gift of his own for his former teammates. 
a bottle of champagne. It's an honor for me to be identified as a Boston Celtic. And you fans made it very easy for me to play hard. From the choice seat people up to the heavens, the gala guys. Now, Debbie and I would like to make a presentation to Harry Mangurian. <laughs> this is a great team that you see and play here today. And they have a great owner. And this is a championship caliber ball club. And I want Harry to use this in May 1981 to celebrate his first NBA championship. David, uh, I got it right. David, I want to thank you. Um, uh, you you typify to me what uh, the best in the NBA is, and I want to wish you and your family continued success. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. headed out for another grueling road trip. In Los Angeles, they had a relatively easy time at defeating the world champion Lakers 105-91 as Larry Bird turned in a flawless exhibition. On the left to Bird. Quick turn around. He's got it! 89-83. Bird has 31 points. McCann goes into the lane. McCann takes his man to the foul line. Goes back out to Ford for a long pop. It's no good. Bird gets the rebound, brings it into the corner. The rainbow is gone. 91-85. Got a step next to the foul line. Lane he goes up from the pop. It is no good. The rebound by Bird. He's been incredible. Cross court on the right to Ford. He's got the daylight. He takes the shot. It is around the rim. No good. The rebound by Bird is back up. It is around the rim and in. And he got five on the play. The whole Boston bench is up on that one. I'm going to tell you a statistic on Bird tonight. They just, you're just not going to believe the performance he's put on. Bird has five assists, three block shots, and five steals. 19 rebounds and 36 points. Can you believe that? We have seen an individual performance here tonight that I can't recall anything better in a long, long time when you consider the complete total basketball that he played not just the scoring as the Celtics on the floor have just come over to shake his hand on March 1st the 76ers again invaded the garden and again the outcome would be resolved in the dying minutes here is Peek 239 left to go Irving underneath Harris steals the ball it goes quickly over to Maxwell on the cup to Archibald lays it up and in and he was fouled out of play Tony Archibald, a spectacular driving layup, and he was fouled on the play. Odd Archibald is at the line, 232 left in the ball game. Tiny Archibald will go two for one at the half two. He does not have to. He makes it. It's 108 103. Archibald holding it. Archibald on the left now to four. Back out deep over to Archibald. Archibald looks. Archibald comes to the left. Parrish and Caldwell Jones are in a muscle tussle. Ford's cruising through. Underneath the back. Oh, well, what a play that. by Chris Ford. A great play by Chris Ford. And timeout has been called. Oh, boy, what a play by Chris Ford. Let's take a timeout with a score. Off to 110 and go to the 104. Ollie Johnson will put the ball into play. Bird guarding him. The pass goes to Dawkins. It's to Ollie Johnson. Three-point field goal attempt is not good. 
Ford has it and gets grabbed in the backcourt, and it may be by Dr. J. Now, one free throw can really just about put the icing on the cake here because they need three possessions. The shot now by Chris is up around the rim and goes in, and he's got another one coming. 111 to 104. Boston leading by seven points. 19 seconds left, and Chris makes it eight. It's 112 to 104. Ah, oh, Cheek comes down on the left, and he throws up the bomb from downtown and hits it. He got a three-point play, play out of it. It's 112 to 107. Bird will put it in play, and gets it to Ford. Back to Bird, give and go, lays it in. 114 to 107. Maxwell steals the pass in. Well, knocked out of his hands, and the game is over. And it's another great, great game in this classic series between these two clubs. And the series stands all even at two games apiece. The final score here at the Garden is Boston 114 and Philadelphia 107. As the season wound down, the Celtics found themselves in a real dogfight with Philadelphia for first place in the Eastern Division. On March 20th, the Celtics downed the Washington Bullets 128 to 116 to vault back into first place by half a game. However, the victory was not easy in coming as the Celtics had to come on strong in the fourth quarter. The release goes down to Henderson. He's in the lane. He goes up and hits. And they had McCarter and Collins got back, but Henderson went over both of them and got it. 104-102 the score. Boston is out front by two. The intensity is pretty high. All right, the pass goes in over to Porter. Porter now loops the pass. That's stolen by Maxwell. Maxwell's been all over the court. Coming down the middle, down the lane, shifts gears, lays it over to Paris. Switch. 108-102. Boston leading by six. The Washington wants to talk. But in their next game, they lost to the 76ers to go back down by a half game with just one week left in the season. Next came the New York Knicks in New York. In this game, Robert Parrish was outstanding, scoring 26 points and blocking seven shots in a 118-116 victory as the Celts pulled into a first-place tie with Philadelphia. Pass in goes to Richardson. It's down to 10 seconds on a shot clock. Now to Ray Williams. He starts to go. He comes up and overshoots. Rebound by Demick. It's blocked by Parrish. And now... Henderson had the pass, and Russell knocked him down at the backcourt foul. And Demick is trying to get a call of goaltending on Paris. No way. That ball was still going up when it got battled away. Gerald Henderson at the line. The shot is good. It is 115 to 113. He's got two for one coming now. And Henderson goes and hits it. Now Williams comes up, tries the lane, going in there. Paris blocks the shot, and Carr has the rebound. Carr keeps the ball, and they foul him in the backcourt. They foul him in the backcourt. Ray Williams the foul. He went in for the shot. Paris blocked it. Paris two key plays right at the end of the game defensively. And... ML will go to the line and shoot three for two. Four seconds left on the clock. All right, ML Carr at the foul line. The shot by ML is around the rim and in. Boston is out in front by four. Make it five as ML made them both. It goes now to Richardson. Three-point attempt is good. One second left. It goes now to Henderson. Henderson holds the ball, and the game's over. Oh, a hectic squirming, wriggling ball game comes to an end. And the final score here at Madison Square Garden, Boston 118 and New York 116. The next night, the Celtics down the New Jersey Nets 111-105, coming from behind in the fourth quarter. On the left, it goes down to Bird, back out to Archibald, he fakes, he's down the lane, he lays it up, it's good! And he was fouled on the play, and the foul foul is called by Dick Bavetta. And New Jersey is angry at Bavetta. Archibald's going to the line, shoot two for one with 33 seconds left. And the shot is up and good by Archibald. Boston has a two-point lead. And 
New Jersey will have the ball. All right, now quickly to pass in goes to Lucas. He's in the lane. He goes up in the air and misses. And the shot is banged around, and finally Henderson's got it, and O'Gorin fouls Henderson in the backcourt. There are only 19 seconds left. And Gerald Henderson is at the line. He's going to get three for two. It's been a roughhouse game. And ML Carr was thrown out for putting a too hard a foul on Darwin Cook. The shot by Henderson is good. And Walter Rooney decided that uh, in this rough game, anyhow, that he better do something like that to keep these guys from going wild at each other because it was starting to get that way. Timeout has been called as Henderson made two free throws. 19 seconds left to go in the ball game, And the Celts have a four-point lead and New Jersey has the ball. Now Cook with a three-point attempt that's no good. Rebound goes to Parrish. He gets it over to Bird. Goes to McHale, and Newland jumps on McHale's back. Uh, McHale's going to go to the line and shoot uh, two shots. Four seconds left in the game. And the shot is around a rim and in. Uh, McHale ready, and he's got it. McAdoo has the ball taken out of his hands by Bird. And that's the end of the ball game. Oh, the Celts hung on to win it. And the final score here at Piscataway, New Jersey, was Boston 111 and New Jersey 105. In their next encounter, the Celtics lost to Detroit. Oddly, this game meant nothing, win or lose. No matter what, the Atlantic Division title and a first-round bye would be decided in the final game of the season between the Celtics and the 76ers. As usual, the game was still in doubt until the final minute. It goes to Archibald. Archibald ducks his head, gets away. On the left down to Maxwell. Cross court, it goes to Paris in the corner of the car. Car being chased. They hit him on the He got the call. He got the call. There's no shot involved. But Boston has the clock on their side. 24 seconds left, and they have the ball. Bird is loose on the left. He does not go in. It goes back out to Archibald. And Archibald gets assaulted by Cheeks. And they're going to give it... A two-shot foul. They're not going to let it. It's a one-shot foul. One-on-one. Archibald one said he let it fly. And Ed Rush said the foul came first. All right. Archibald at the foul line. A fantastic ball game. Philadelphia came back. They got the benefit of a lot of foul calls in the fourth quarter. And they took advantage. And Archibald makes the first one. That'll put the nail. That's the nail into the coffin right here. Six-point lead, 20 seconds to go. That means Philly needs two three-point attempts. Now, Archibald was at the line again. Each team has, a, has one timeout left. The shot switch. And that puts Boston up by seven. Here comes Tony from downtown. The shot is good. Oh, my goodness. That cuts it down to four points. 13 seconds left. Archibald gets the ball to Bird. Bird's coming up. Bird goes to Paris. Paris gets hit on the arm by Tony. Back out to Bird. Bird holds the ball. had won the long, hard battle. Now they had a week to rest up for the playoffs. But each Celtic was itching for what lay ahead. The fact that they had posted the best record in the NBA at 62-20 would be insignificant unless they won it all. As a team, they were ready. It was a pretty safe assumption that Selleck's first-round opponent would emerge from the Chicago-New York series, and that's exactly what happened.
Chicago had bumped off the Knicks in two straight, and after having finished the regular season with eight consecutive victories, they were now riding the crest of a ten-game winning streak. In the opener, played at the Boston Garden on Sunday, April 5th. The Celtics raced to a nine-point lead after one quarter, and this game would no longer be in doubt. Two nights later, the Celtics would take a two-games-to-none lead in the series with a 106-97 victory. Now the scene shifted to Chicago for Game 3 and 4. In Game 3, the Bulls were giving it their all, but with a score tied at 87 early in the fourth quarter, Cedric Maxwell hit a hook shot, and the Celts were out in front to stay. Down three games to none, the Chicago Bulls now had the unenviable task of having to win four straight, a feat never accomplished in NBA playoff history, and a feat that was not about to start here. Maxwell fidgeting. The crowd is in the act. The shot is no good. The rebound goes to Carr. Brings it back out. He's scurrying around. Now to Bird. Bird gets nailed. And the foul is on Chicago. And Bird and Carr hug each other. And Bird's going to the foul line. All right, Bird's going to get two shots. The shot is good. That gives Boston a three-point lead. And Maxwell goes over to congratulate Bird, and Bird will go again. He's got 32 points. On the shot by Bird, swish. 107-103. Up top now, Greenwood with a long pop. Three-point attempt is no good. Bird has the rebound, and we got a foul right off the rebound, and it's on either Dietrich or Theus. It's on Theus. And Bird's going to the foul line with one second left in the ball game. He's got three for two. All right, Bird at the line. The shot is good. He's got another one coming. And the shot is good. Uh, Larry has uh, 35. I assume that's what he's going to wind up with. The ball goes to Theus. He throws it at the hoop. The ball game is over. And the series is over. And the Celtics have won this series in four straight. So now it was sit and wait time again. Wait for the outcome of the Philadelphia-Milwaukee series that was destined to go the full seven with Philly emerging victorious. The end result of all this was the Celtics would go eight days with nothing more than a good strenuous workout. That fine edge that had been developed was being dulled ever so slightly, but just enough to cost them game one of the Eastern Conference Finals as the 76ers eked out a 105-104 victory at the Boston Garden. However, the following night, the Celtics, true to their character, bounced back and wiped out the Philadelphia contingent, 118-99. So now, with a series tied at one game apiece, it was on to Philadelphia for games three and four. There are many around this state old town who would have you believe that this edition of the Boston Celtics were ready for immediate canonization, joining 13 other teams that had worn the green and white. However, before that could happen, the Celtics would have to win at the Philadelphia Spectrum, where... In their last nine encounters, they had come up losers. In Game 3, they again went down to defeat 110-100. to Game 4 was closer, but the outcome the same. Celtics lose 107-105. They now trailed in the series three games to one. Was this to be a repeat of last season's inglorious ending? Where was that so-called Celtic pride? What had happened to the poise and determination that had been a Celtic trademark for so long. Had it vanished into the darkness of the night, never to return? As the multitude filed into the Boston Garden on the night of April 29th, there was an eerie feeling in the air. Somehow, somewhere, the spirit of those great Celtic teams of the past had been summoned. It echoed from wall to wall. Out to Baylor driving the lane. He lays it up. His block by Russell. a minute to play. Johnny outside now to Sam Johnson. Two-handed set shot. He's good. One second left. And Kuzi's got the ball. He throws it straight up in the air. It's all over. And there they go. They won it again. It rained down from the rafters where those 13 green and white banners hang to remind us of yesterday. Towns turns and fires and hits. in a minute to play now. Havlicek back to JoJo. Bang! He gets it out deep and Havlicek steals it. Over to Sam Jones. Havlicek stole the ball. It's all over. It's all over. Johnny Havlicek is being mauled by the fans. It's all over. Johnny Havlicek stole the ball. Yeah, 
Yes, once again, that famed parquet floor would be the setting for another memorable chapter of basketball history. Game five was to be a freakish one. After one quarter, the Celtics were up by two, but at the half, they were down by ten. Then on the third quarter, the Celtics narrowed the margin to one, setting up the fourth and final quarter, a quarter that would bring back memories of yesterday and spawn the hopes for tomorrow. With just under two minutes to play and Philly clinging to a six-point lead, Darrell Dawkins stole a Larry Bird pass, and it looked like the end. But there were certain intangibles involved here. There was the spirit of yesterday and the determination of today, as trite as it may sound, that spelled Celtic Fry. All right, Holland's over the line to the left. Looking on the cut now goes to Tony. It's deflected by Maxwell, picked off by Paris. Now they got to come up fast. Archibald coming fast. Archibald comes around to the right. He's getting ridden out of the play. He gets away, lays it in. Basket count. They got fouled. He got fouled. That's a big, big play. I think it was Andrew Tony who fouled him. And Archibald will go two for one at the line with a minute and 20 left, and he could reduce the lead to three points. All right, now Archibald is at the foul line. It's 109-105. Boston trailing by four. I have a shot by Archibald, makes it 109-106, the South Trail 3. A minute and 20 seconds left, and Tony wants some daylight. He wants to work on Archibald. The pass goes into Dawkins. He's holding the ball. He's going to Tony with it. He comes underneath. Paris made him eat it! Bobby John picked it up and lost it! He lost it! He just got away from him! He had an easy layup, and it got away! And now they will have the ball. Parrish, a great defensive play. Bobby Jones picked up the loose ball after the, the jam shot and went for the hoop and just it squirted out of his hands out of bounds. And now so we got 55 the seconds the left. Archibald bringing the ball up. Up top, Richardson's on him. Oh, it goes to Bird. He's coming for the hoop. He lays it in. Oh, the pass is thrown away. Bird picks it up, heading for the basket. Going to go all the way, lays it up. No good. Rebound by ML. Up and no good. Maxwell ties it up. And Earl Trump says no basket because there was a foul on ML's shot. And ML's up the line three for two. The shot is good. It's all tied up. Maxwell crouched over, pounding the floor. ML. We'll go again. And Boston yeah. leads by a point. All right, Tony. Gets it in now to Holland. It's 15 seconds. Over the line to the left. Back out to Bobby Jones. Now to Julius. A stutter step. He drops it. Back out to Bobby Jones. A fake. A drive. It's pissed. ML has the rebound. Three. Give Boston the lead, and it was a race to the wire. 
Out deep over the bird. Over Bobby. Sweet! And Boston leads, 84-83. 7.32 left. Underneath now to Dawkins. Dawkins will turn around. It's good. Now Philadelphia leads by one. Out deep now to Dawkins. On the left to Hollins. Underneath to Dr. J. He's got it underneath. And Bird blocks the shot. What a play by Bird. All right, Archibald brings it up. Archibald in the circle. Fires. Misses. Rebound by Archibald. It's gone. 87, Boston leads by two. Holland looking. In the circle. Back to Cheeks. Underneath. Lays it up and in. It ties it up. Archibald fiddling and diddling. Comes out around a pick. Goes on the left now to Bird. He drops it. Gets it in a map. Parrish, the shot is good. And he got fouled. Parrish will go two for one at the line. 93-93, the shot is good, and Robert puts him ahead again, 94-93. Underneath now, it goes quickly to Dr. J. He can't do anything with it. Over to Dawkins, who stops it. And Philadelphia leads by one. Archibald starts to go through, and we got a foul on Holland, and Archibald will go to the foul line. Ah, oh, the shot by Archibald is good. That ties it up. Uh, Tiny is going to go again. And the shot is good, and Boston leads by one. It goes now to Bird. Bird fakes, tries, baseline, underneath, lays it up over his head. It's good, and we've got Jack Madden that just called a foul, an offensive foul on Paris, and he is gone. He took the basket away from Boston as Bird had scored it, and it fouled Parrish out. That could have been the crusher. With Parrish out of the game and Rick Roby sideline with a stiff neck, a lot of teams would have folded. But, as he had done in the first playoff game against Chicago, Fitch went with the rookie, McHale, and he responded. Back out to Archibald. Archibald looking. Archibald, they don't have any time. Bird clears and fires, and it's off the really guy. And at the top of the back corner, it fell in. Holland's over the line to the left. 58 seconds left. Bird on him on the switch. Back out to Dawkins. Tony, the long bomb. It's good. 98-97. Boston leading by one. Out uh, goes to Bird. Bird loses the ball. Tony has it. 28 seconds left. Tony looks. Ducks his head. Going. It's blocked by the gal. And it goes into Julius. And he is fouled. Irving at the foul line. I don't know whether he's going to try to make both of them. He missed the first. Now you know he's not going to try to make this one. And he goes up and hits it. He did try to make it. It goes now to Archibald. He throws it up. It went in. It won't count. And the Celtics have kept this series alive. They have won here tonight. The first time since 1979, and they couldn't have picked a better time. The final score here at the Spectrum was Boston 100 and Philadelphia 98. And now it came down to one game at the Boston Garden on Sunday, May 3rd. It seemed only fitting that these two great teams should resolve the issue this way. In the case of the Celtics, this was vintage, the kind of basketball that made their heritage. When history examines this game, it will recall the final five minutes and 24 seconds when the 76ers seemingly had it won. But as Philadelphia was about to find out, that poise and determination that means Celtic pride was just too much to overcome. 89-83, Boston trailing by six, Holland bringing the ball up. Over the line to the left, 428 left to go in the ball game. Henderson guarding him. All right, goes to Julius with Maxwell on it. Julius starts to go, fakes, passes off, and Bird steals it. Out to Archibald, driving in, lays it up. It's no good, but he got fouled by Caldwell Jones. Archibald ready, swish. 89-84, Boston trailing by five. Archibald again, swish. 89-85, the South trail by four. Archibald holding the ball. Archibald 
Adam wants that good shot if he can get it. Now it goes to Bird underneath the power. Parrish reverse turn. Clear. And Boston trails by two. And Philadelphia wants a timeout. The handoff goes now to Cheek. Cheek coming around to the right. Goes in and passes the ball back off. And it goes to Dawkins. And it's blocked by Corey. Now Gordon goes quickly over to Bird. Underneath the Dawkins is stolen by Parrish and Archibald again. On the right now, quickly goes the Bird. Bird wheels away from Julius, and there's a foul on the play, and Lowry's going to the line. All right, Bird ready. The shot is missed. All right, Lowry will go again. And he dips, he shoots, he's got it. 89-88, Boston trailing by one point. Now Bird will go again. And the shot. Switch. It's all tied up. All right, Cheek. Over the line to the middle with a minute 25 left. Archibald guarding him. Down low into Dawkins. Back to Irving. Irving. Pumps a little bit. Goes on the pick and roll. The ball is loose. Dawkins has it now. Tries to force it up, and it's no good. And Bird has the rebound. Bird's coming to the left. Stop and pop off the glass. It's got off the lead. 91-89. And Archibald got trampled underneath. Philadelphia has called a timeout. Gee, over the line to the middle with 57 seconds left in the game. Henderson guarding it. Now it goes to Irving. Irving, swing, fires a pass, and stolen by Carr! ML Carr got in the passing lane and took it away from Lionel Holland. Henderson, back over now to Carr. Carr looking, it's down to 11 seconds on the shot clock. Henderson has it not loose, it's picked up, and nearby Keeks over the line with 30 seconds left to go. And they can't go down the call the blocking foul on Henderson. And Cheeks is at the foul line. 29 seconds left. And the shot is missed. And Ford is cheering this crowd on. The shot now is good. Boston has the ball. Bird gets it over to Paris. Back to Bird. Now to Archibald. Archibald bringing the ball up. Loads of time left. All right, Archibald fiddling and diddling with the ball. Down to 13 on the shot clock. 18 overall. Archibald is in a trap now, and he comes around to the left over to Carr. Down to five. Now they got to make a move. Archibald head fake, goes to Carr. Carr takes the shot. It is no good. The rebound by Paris. And he lost it. One second left. And they got a timeout. Woo! And Bobby Jones is going to put the ball on the play. And the pass hits the top of the backboard. that spread onto the streets, into the heart of the city, and beyond. A more meaningful thing was happening. Celtic pride, which for so long signified this team, was spreading. It no longer meant the Boston Celtics. It now stood for the Boston Celtics and their massive following. Win or lose, the basketball fans of New England were behind these guys. As great as the victory over Philadelphia was, the job was not yet over. One more battle, one more round before the Celtics could claim what seemed so rightfully theirs. 
In the final round of the playoffs, the championship round, the Celtics went up against the Western Conference winners, the Houston Rockets. Just a 40-42 ball club during the regular season. The Rockets were astounding the entire basketball establishment in the playoffs. Led by big Moses Malone, they had already beaten the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. They had knocked off the high-scoring San Antonio Spurs, and they had subdued the equally surprising Kansas City Kings. They had come a long way. And you don't do that on just luck, as the Celtics found out in Game 1 as the Rockets led after three quarters. But in the final 12 minutes of play, the Celtics turned it on and came away with a victory 98-95. Bird, baseline left. Swick. 92-91, Boston leading by one. Taken away by Carr and Bird. Maxwell has it. Lays it over to Carr, who lays it in. 94-91, the score, Boston leads by three. A stick away, Maxwell. And he stops it. It is 96-91. Boston leading by five and an explosive first. Now to Parrish. Reverse turn. Baseline is no good. Rebound. Bird. No good. Rebound by Bird. Is backwards and good. 19 seconds left. They took the boards away from Houston. And they have a three-point lead with 19 seconds left. He goes out deep to Maxwell, who stands there. The ball game's over, and Boston has won the opening game of the series. 98-95, and believe me, they were trailing most of the night. And they had to come from behind again to come up with the win. The final score here in the Boston Garden is Boston 98 and Houston 95. A lot of folks were finding it hard to believe the Houston Rockets were actually in this thing. This is going to be a four-game blowout. Wrong. In Game 2, the Rockets pulled out a 92-90 victory at the Boston Garden. To send the series to Houston for Games 3 and 4, tied at a game apiece. It's possible, but not probable, that the Celtics were underestimating these guys. Well, whatever, the Celtics went into the Houston Summit for Game 3 and just annihilated the Rockets. It had been 26 years since the team had been as badly beaten as the Rockets were on this afternoon. Up on the right now, Durod with the ball. Durod goes to the circle and the shot is blocked and knocked out of his hand. And the game's over. And the final score here at the Summit in Houston is Boston 94 or Houston 71. Uh, the 71 point ties the lowest total ever recorded in a final series. And that was Syracuse, who lost that game to Fort Wayne 74-71 in 1955, so that ties the lowest total. But at any rate, the ball game's over here. There. That should have done it. Wrong again. Just 24 hours later, the Rockets used a strange game plan by employing only six players and beat the Celtics 91-86. This series was all tied up again at two games apiece. However, despite their success, the Rockets were starting to defeat themselves. Sometimes when success comes too rapidly, the head gets a little too big and the crown will not fit. Here were the Houston Rockets, a team which should have had some pride in what they had already accomplished, questioning the Celtics' pride. Disparaging remarks about the Celtics were filtering out of the Houston camp. One player went so far as to say that he knew of four guys back in his hometown who could join him and beat the Celtics. Obviously, the Rockets were just four players away from winning the championship. Anyway, on the night of May 12th, the Celtics took to the Boston Garden floor, and with pride in their hearts, but vengeance on their minds, they destroyed the Rockets 109-80, to with Cedric Maxwell leading the way. Archibald in the corner now to Ford on the cut to Maxwell. Wheels in, beats Paul, goes underneath, beats Malone, lays it in. What a play by Maxwell! Bird look, the stutter step, fake, drive, lays it off the parish, and missed the rebound by Maxwell is good. It goes to Archibald in the circle underneath the Maxwell fake, goes up, lays it up and in, he got fouled on the play. And Maxwell goes down and beats on the ground out of joy. Bird a fake, a drive, throws it up, Maxwell picks it off, Maxwell wiggles, lays it up and in. He's got 22 points, he must have wiggled seven different directions that time. 
He drops it off in the corner on the right to Henderson. The shot no good. Maxwell has the rebound. Man, oh, man, he has been all over the court. He's got 28 points so far. He has played himself a whale of a basketball game, and he's going to be replaced by Larry Bird. And what a hand, Maxwell. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Our standing ovation. And he, he comes off raising a one finger up in the air and slapping a high five with everybody on the bench. The Delts were now just one game. 48 minutes away from their 14th NBA championship. On Thursday, May 14th, 1981, the Celtics would play their 99th and final game of the season at the Summit in Houston, Texas. With Cedric Maxwell churning his way toward MVP honors in the playoffs, the Celtics advanced to what seemed to be an insurmountable lead. But the Rockets, with their engines rapidly expiring, gave it one last thrust and narrowed the gap to three. Then Larry Bird, who had been in a shooting slump the last few games, demonstrated the difference between being good and being great. For he was there when the Celtics needed him most. Bird baseline rainbow swift. A very important hoop. Bird at 22. 88-83 Boston leads by five. Less than four minutes to play in the ball game. Back out the bird, fall away rainbow. Swing! And Boston leads 90 to 83 at bird at 24. He looks around. In the corner, bird. Swing! Three point field goal! A three point field goal for Larry Bird. 95 89 a score. Boston leading by six. A minute and a half left. Burns in the rebound. It goes now to Carr. Carr fiddling with his little second. It's over! It's over, the Boston Celtics have won the World Championship in 1981. It's all over. The Boston Celtics have won the World Championship in 1981. They have beaten the Houston Rockets four games to two, and they have become the 14th flag winners for the Boston Garden. Here's a bird. Come on, bird. How does it feel? We fought awful hard all year long. What? Some ups and downs, but we finally came through in the end. Drick. How's it feel, baby? I mean, you've been doing this before in college, but this one is a little bit special. I tell you, this is, uh, this is a triple crown for me, and I tell you, it's the best feeling uh, that could ever happen to you. And we've worked hard, and we've tried very hard for the last two years, and we've finally been able to accomplish it. And it's, a, it's the best thing, best thing ever. I've been through this with you 13 times, and this is number 14. I'm just as happy as you are. Yeah, this was a real great one. Of course, it's a real different one. I was coaching, but of the other five, this was as satisfying as any of them, believe me, because this team showed tremendous character, tremendous character. They, they kept their poise, they kept their cool, and they just went at them. And, I, and, they're, and they're all great kids. It's a real great feeling. The coach of the champion Boston Selleck, congratulations. This is a hard, hard one, and you deserve every bit of it. Bill, ex exhaustion and exhilaration at the same time, but this was one heck of a season. Great season, John. And guys, you, you, you can stand and hand bouquets out to every one of those players from now until the time training camp opens, uh, which seems like a long, long ways away from us right now. Uh, we finally get a chance to take two or three or four days and not have to worry about Philadelphia, Houston, or anybody else, and that's going to be a good feeling. To be a Boston Celtic takes a special kind of person. Not just anyone can wear that fame green and white uniform. That's why this championship team seems so different. In the past, the John Havlicek could come along and look to a Bob Cousy, Bill Russell, or any of those great early days Celts and seek that special kind of Celtic pride, for they had instigated it. Later, a Dave Cowens or a JoJo White would join the ranks and they could call on a Havlicek or a Don Nelson, for they had carried on the tradition. But such was not the case in 1981. Not one of these players had ever played on a championship team. The heritage was still there, and they lived up to it. And with it, started a brand new era of Celtic pride.